So welcome back to Pure Math 030. This is a lesson on a review lesson on number systems. And I'll be going through the basic number systems that we use a lot in this course and it's all review material, things concepts that you should have seen before. So starting with the the simplest number system, just the counting numbers, and those are the natural numbers with the symbol n. These are 1, 2, 3, etc., onward to um, positive infinity, if you like. No decimals, no fractions, not even zero, just the regular counting numbers, and a number system that worked well for many centuries. If you put zero on to the end of that, you create the set of whole numbers, w, but it's identical to natural except it has zero, and once again no fractions or decimals. Expanding it further we get integers, and the difference here is we go all the way to the left and all the way to the right, or to infinity in both directions. Once again no fractions or decimals, but this is the introduction of negative of signed numbers, and that's i. Rational numbers with the symbol Q, these are numbers of form A over B, where A and B are members or elements of the set of integers. In other words, these are fractions. And this is the first sign of these in the number systems. And a fraction like negative 3 over 5 is a good example of a rational number. A decimal like 0 0.2567 is also a rational number. Even though it's a decimal, that could very easily be written in fraction form by putting it over the right power of 10. And this too, this repeating decimal, could be expressed as a fraction. And those of you who remember that method would be comfortable with it. I'm not going to bother with it, but it is important to remember that repeating decimals are rational. They can be expressed as fractions. Any whole number or integer can also be expressed as a fraction because it can always be written over 1. The next number system is the set of irrational numbers, Q bar. And these have a definition based on what it is not. These are numbers that cannot be expressed in the form A over B with A and B elements of the set of integers. In other words, they cannot be written as fractions. This can be tricky. And the way most people identify it is um, by noting that they are non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. So they go forever, and they never end. Now that's hard to recognize in most cases. I mean, this could be considered one, 5.69870024, and presumably it doesn't repeat. But we get used to, to seeing these numbers in things like pi. Um, that's 3.14159, etc. The decimal keeps on going. Now, pi is a very unusual number in that it's not even formed as an irrational number the way that you normally do, but it's a good example of an irrational number. More often, though, we recognize them of being of the form a square root of a non perfect, perfect square. So anytime you try to take the square root, or actually a cube root or a fourth root, of a number that you cannot take the root of exactly, then you get an irrational number. So the square root of 2, I didn't actually work this one out, um, although I do know what it's about equal to, 1.414 with more decimals. We know that that's irrational simply because we're trying to take the root of a number that is not a perfect square. Square root 24 can be simplified into 2 root 6, but that's just a mixed a, a number. It's a simplified version of a, of a radical, but it still is irrational. Root 57, many, many, many other examples. All of these are irrational numbers. We see them quite a bit in this course. This is a diagram that illustrates the whole thing. The set of natural numbers, the very smallest rectangle I've got is the smallest number system in one sense. I, I realize that it's infinite in size, but it has a restriction on the one side. And you can tell from the diagram as you go through this that 
the set of natural numbers is a subset of the set of whole numbers. And actually this pattern continues. Every whole number is also an integer. Every integer can be expressed as a rational number. And that's where it ends. And then on the other side we have irrational numbers. And rational and irrational are mutually exclusive. You cannot be both rational and irrational. You're either one or the other. Either you can be written as a fraction or you cannot. But together these form the set of real numbers. And this is also written in fancier font. The set of real numbers is equal to the union of Q and Q bar. That is the union or the, uh, the two number systems taken together. And that's what the U means. That's not something that you get tested on, but you do encounter it. And the set of real numbers basically means everything. So thank you for your time. That is the lesson.